thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to tie a yellow wing butterfly. It's a very effective Atlantic salmon fly, especially for spring and early summer. I tie my butterflies in a fairly unorthodox way, which you'll see later in the video, but it makes for a very durable fly. So, we're going to start with a size 6 Mustad 3399A. It's a bronzed hook, down eye. I'm going to start with white thread. This is Danville Flymaster 6 aught wax thread. I'm just going to make a little thread base on the hook shank and then wind the, the thread back up towards the eye for the wing. Now make sure you leave plenty of room for the head and the hackle at the front of the fly. So the wing is yellow kid goat hair, or kid goat hair dyed yellow. And we're going to make the wing about the length of the shank. We'll tie that in. You could actually tie it up a little further up the hook shank. See, we have plenty of room in front. I'm going to taper the, the butt ends a bit. I don't tie my butterflies with a tinsel tag, though it's customary to do so. Uh, I find that if anything's going to get damaged on the fly, that's going to go first. Plus, for this fly, we're using crystal flash in the tail, so we don't really need the extra flash of the tinsel. So, so I got a little bundle of pearl tinsel flash, or crystal flash rather. I'm going to tie that in. Maybe six or eight strands of it. We're going to cut the tail not too long. So we have a fairly sparse crystal flash tail. Now we're going to make this one with a green butt. So what I like to use is Danville um, fluorescent nylon wool. It's got a very good sparkle. Take about five turns of that. Maybe four. We're going to do four. Cut off the butt ends of that. Next, I am going to tie in the body, which is peacock curl. Got about four strands of hurl. Tie that in. And we're going to just put it aside in the material clip for now. Okay, now, here's the weird part. We're going to divide the wing now and tie it back. Now, most people, when they tie this fly, they, they tie the wing in last, like any other wet fly, any other hair wing wet fly, or any wet fly. Um, what I find is with this method, the kid goat hair is supple enough to um, to bend back easily because we're doubling it back on itself and it gives the wing a greater um, splayed effect. So we're going to divide the hair in two by wrapping our thread on each side and then we're going to post the wing just like we'd be doing if we were tying wolves. Now, I took about four wraps around the far wing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to anchor it down against the body. And that's going to keep the wing locked in. I'm going to do the same with the near wing. Make sure you keep your thread wraps loose so they don't slip off the wing. And then you can tighten them up on your last wrap and cinch that down. Now I have very widely splayed wings which I find uh, to give a good wobbling effect in the water. Um, I like to use butterflies when the water is just a little cloudy. Okay, so we're done with the white thread. So we will tie that off. Tie in our black thread. This is Vivas 12 aught 
No, ten aught. Okay, here's the, the strange part. This is the part that's just a little bit tricky, but it makes for a very durable fly. So we're going to wind the thread back, and we're going to wrap the peacock curl with the thread all at one time. So I'm holding on to the thread and the peacock curl. I'm going to wrap it forward, and you have to kind of dodge the wings, so you have to kind of move them out of the way. And then I'm going to wrap it over the wings in both directions and once around the front of the fly. Now what we do is tie the peacock curl back down, trim the butts, and we're going to take the thread and we're going to wrap three or four turns around the body to reinforce the hurl. I find this to be a very effective way of making the fly stronger and last longer. You'll be able to catch more fish with one fly. Okay, now we're ready for the last step. Now, um, these flies sort of change over the years. The original Ingalls butterfly had a rooster hackle um, sometimes I use a hen hackle, sometimes I use rooster folded, um, but I like the barbs to point backwards. The original one had barbs straight up and down, almost like a dry fly. But the forms of these flies kind of morph over the years. Not enough for it not to be a butterfly, but it's still a butterfly. Just a little different form than it had originally. So we're going to tie in folded brown rooster hackle. I've already folded it. We only need a few turns. It's going to be a fairly sparse hackle. Um, you would probably take fewer turns with hen than you would rooster. This hen is a little bit webbier and denser. And I want those barbs to point backwards. Oh, it wrapped over itself. Let me do that again. I'm going to take a few turns. This is not a very good quality hackle. It's from a very cheap Indian hackle neck. So there's not a lot of barb density. So I need a few wraps of this to get enough of a collar hackle. I'll tie that off. Clip the butt end. I can trim or pluck any errant hackle fibers and then form a head. So, as you see, because the wing was not tied in last, you can get a very small head, a very neat head, without the wing butts underneath. And the wings themselves stay very nicely splayed out to the sides of the fly. And like I said, it kind of has a, a bit of a wobble in the water. So, I'm going to whip finish. Trim the thread. And apply a coat of head cement. And that's it. Yellow winged butterfly. Hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching.